the Idris Shah Foundation podcast. Practical psychology for today. Featuring the works of Idris Shah, narrated by David Alt. Welcome to the Idris Shah Foundation podcast. In this edition of the podcast, we will hear selections from The Hundred Tales of Wisdom by Idris Shah. This audio is made available by the Idris Shah Foundation. The Bankrupt and the Camel A certain man was an incorrigible bankrupt. Because he went about gaining credit from people who did not realize that his credit was not good, the magistrate of his town ordered that he should be conveyed through all the streets while his peculiarity and the danger of trusting him was proclaimed aloud. The camel of a Kurdish woodseller was taken away from him, upon which they mounted the bankrupt for the whole day, while the magistrate's decision was cried through the town. For the whole day the Kurd followed the procession, while the situation was called out in various languages for all to understand. When this had been done, and the bankrupt dismounted at length, the Kurd demanded from him some compensation for the use of the camel. What have you been doing all day? asked the bankrupt, if you have not been listening to what everyone has said, that I never pay for anything which I have used. The Thirsty Man and the Water A thirsty man came to the side of a stream. He could not reach the water, for there was a wall which he could not negotiate. He took a brick from the wall and threw it into the water, so that it made a noise, delicious to his ears. He continued to do this, brick after brick, until people asked him why. He said, There are two reasons. The first is that I enjoy the splashing sound, which is music to the ears of the thirsty. The second reason is that with each brick I tear off the wall, I get nearer to the level of the water. The thirstier the man is, the more he pines for the very sound of the water, and the more and the faster he tears the bricks from the wall. The Insane Behaviour of Dunnoon Dunnoon was behaving in what was considered by ordinary people to be such an insane manner that he was taken to an institution for the mad. Some of his friends went to the madhouse to find out how he was. They thought that he might have been behaving as he did for deliberate reasons, so that people could learn from him. When he saw them, he shouted out at them, asking them who they were and threatening them. They explained that they were his friends, and that they had come to inquire as to his welfare, and to show that they did not believe that he was really mad. Dunnoon threw sticks and stones at them, and they hurried away from his madness as they took it to be. Then Dunnoon laughed and explained, They think that they understand that I am only playing the part of a madman, but when they see me doing it, they imagine that I am mad. The Sage and the Man Asleep A certain man was lying asleep in the open when a dangerous reptile started to enter his mouth. A sage mounted on a horse saw this happening. He tried to prevent the creature from being swallowed, but he was just too late. He therefore hit the sleeper a mighty blow to awaken him. Then he mercilessly harried him to a tree under which were rotting fruit. The horseman forced the man to eat them until he could hold no more. The man complained and shouted, asking what he had done to be treated in that way. Now the horseman forced the man to run in front of him until his feet became blistered. This continued until, after many hours, the running man vomited and threw up what he had swallowed. Then it was that he saw the abominable thing which was the real cause of the treatment. The Bear A man once saved the life of a bear, which became attached to him and grateful for what he had done. 
The man, being tired, lay down to sleep, with the bear beside him. Another man passing by told him to be careful, saying that the friendship of a fool was worse than opposition. But the first man only thought that the second was jealous of him, and took no notice of these words. He even thought that the other man was trying to deprive him of the security of a faithful companion. When, however, he lay down to sleep and dozed off, the bear, seeing flies approach, tried to strike them with a stone, and in so doing, killed the man who had saved him. The Gardener and the Three Men A gardener saw three men on his land, who should not have been there. They were miscreants, a lawyer, a pretended sharif, descendant of Muhammad, and a bogus Sufi. The gardener realized that while these men were united, he would not be able to deal with them. They were too strong. So he resolved to cause division among them, so that he could separate them. He addressed the Sufi telling him to go to the house to bring a rug for them to sit upon. The supposed Sufi went off, and the gardener said to the remaining two, One of you is a legist, the other a sharif. Through the pronouncements of the one of you we are able to eat, and through your learning we can take wing. The other is our prince, a sovereign, a prince, Syed, of the house of the prophet. But who is the greedy, foul Sufi to be a companion of such important men as you? Oppose him. When he returns, send him away. Then remain in my garden for a week. They sent the Sufi away, and the gardener followed him and struck him with a stick, saying, Does Sufihood entitle you to enter my garden? The Sufi said to his friends, Take care now. For although you thought badly of me, I am not as bad as this man. Now that he had dealt with the Sufi, the gardener turned to the Sharif and said, Your Highness, there is food in my house. Go there and ask for it. When the Sharif had gone, he spoke to the lawyer. The gardener told him that he surely realized that the Sharif was a fraud. What he said was a reflection of his own mind, and not true of the descendants of the prophet. But the lawyer listened to him. So the gardener was able to approach the sharif and abuse him, accusing him of theft, asking him what license the prophet had left for his descendants to rob. The sharif said, If I am not a sharif, I am not as bad as you are, for you have surrendered me to this evil man. Now the gardener was alone with the lawyer. He said to him, Is it your legal judgment that you can steal from me, you thief? What is your statutory authority? The lawyer answered, You are right, and you may beat me, for this is a correct payment for whoever abandons his friends. The Dervish Who Married a Prostitute the high Syed said to the wearer of the dervish robe, If you had not been in such a hurry to marry a harlot and told me of your plans, we would have chosen for you a pure woman. The dervish answered, I have had nine pure women, and as each of them became loose, I was full of sadness. I married this one deliberately, in order to see what would happen. I have attempted reason as far as it would go. Now I will practice irrationality. The King's Hawk and the Owls There was once a noble hawk which belonged to a king. Flying one day, the hawk became tired and settled on a ruined building to rest. The ruin was, however, the home of a colony of owls who resented his presence. The owls attacked this noble creature, who told them that he meant no harm, and that he was only passing through their domain. But the owls cried, Do not listen to him. 
How could he have anything to do with the king? He is lying in order to deprive us of our home by guile. Manipulation of the Mind Once upon a time there were some schoolboys. They were lazy and wanted to escape from their studies. One of them suggested that they should make their teacher feel ill by telling him how terrible he looked. Thus it was that as soon as the master arrived at the school, one boy after another told him that he was looking ill. At first the teacher told the boys that he was quite well and they were imagining things. But as more and more boys apparently spontaneously described him as looking ill, he began to feel it himself. Returning to his house, he told his wife that something was wrong with him. She said that she thought that it was his imagination, but he insisted that he was near to death and took to his bed, even accusing her of being insensitive to his sufferings. The Love Poems A lover visiting his beloved brought out the poems which he had written to her and read them at length. The verses dealt with what he thought of her and how he felt about her attraction and beauty. The lady said to him, Here you are with me and able to perceive my qualities directly, but you insist upon expressing emotions which represent yourself, not me. I am not your object. It is you who are the object of your own affections. It is you who stand between yourself and me. The King's Slave Once upon a time there was a king's slave. The slave was so extremely devoted to the king that he used to faint whenever he entered his presence. Now people knew that this slave was a great favourite of the king's and they would give him all kinds of presents for the king. They would also give him petitions and applications which he would put in his satchel in the hope of presenting them to the king. Yet whenever the slave found himself actually in the king's presence, he was so overcome by the king's magnificence and by his devotion to the king that he used to swoon and collapse on the floor and lie there senseless. When he did so, the king used to pick up the satchel and look in it. He used to take out the presents and read all the petitions, and he would act on the petitions and fulfil the wishes of the people who had put them there, although the slave himself had no part at all in the intervention. In this way, the slave did not have to put the petitions forward, and the fact that he was in such great awe of the king made really no difference at all. The king had other slaves and they were also in very great awe of the king. They were so overawed by him that they hardly ever managed to make any petition at all, and sometimes when they did manage to make petitions, hardly any of those were granted. The Story of the Learned Teacher once upon a time there was a teacher who knew many things, and he was a very poor man, and even in the coldest weather he only wore a thin shirt. Now a bear had been carried down from the mountains in a river, and it was drifting down the river with only its head visible. The pupils of this scholar, knowing that their master didn't have a coat, and seeing only the fur on the bear's head, said to him, Look! There's a fur coat in the river and you do need a coat. Why don't you go and get it? The teacher was very cold and he plunged into the river and caught hold of the skin and the bear caught hold of him and there he was fighting in the middle of the water. The pupils shouted, Leave it alone and come out. And the teacher called back to them, I've left it, but it will not leave me. The Story of the Seeker from India A certain seeker from India came to visit a saint, and when he had reached the door of the place where the saint lived, 
a voice came from inside, saying, Go back, you have fulfilled your purpose, and you have profited through having come to my door. If you actually get to the point of seeing me, you will lose by it. Similarly, a small conversation can carry a lesson just like a light which kisses a candle and lights it. That is enough, and that has completed the requirement. If the oven were on fire, if it were so hot as to be on fire, you would be able to gain no benefit from it. It would be too much. This podcast is copyright 2018, the Idris Shah Foundation.